goods of supplies into Haiti last Sunday. Thanks to them, Thursday's event was carried out smoothly. Quick survivors from nearby tank camps were the eight recipients this time. A total of 653 families happily took home with them tarpaulins, blankets and rice. In the wee hours before the distribution, it has been a sleepless night for volunteers at Siji's coordination center and the OECC offices. While the men move the boxes of aid supplies, the women provide illumination with flashlights. The cartons are being loaded into the truck for the aid distribution that will take place in a few hours. On February 25th at 4.30 a.m., the trucks head off to the distribution site at the base camp of the Jordanian Peacekeeping Corps. Safeguarded by the peacekeepers, the aid distribution will proceed in a secure environment. Local volunteers join the aid relief team to set up the location for the day ahead. Just before 6 in the morning, the break of day means volunteers can put their flashlights away. Outside the walls, quake survivors were here even before the volunteers arrived. The aid recipients get into long lines and wait patiently. As always, before the distribution, volunteers break the ice with smiles and songs because every encounter makes the once-in-a-lifetime memory. The list of aid recipients for this distribution, who are mostly quake survivors living in the tent camps, was provided by the God's Family Church of Haiti. Though they may have lost everything in the disaster, these deprived people still tried their best to dress up for the long-awaited occasion. 48-year-old Fifi is overcome with emotions and gratitude as she receives a tarpaulin, blanket and rice. It goes to show the kind of adversity they have been experiencing in the wake of the quake. What if uh, someday you find food, or the day you don't find food, we have to live? I'm happy greatly because yesterday I happened all the day without food. But today I'm going to eat. The commander of the Jordanian Peacekeepers Base Camp also says that this has been a very special mission. We're working with the Tsiji Foundation for the aid distribution. Tsiji is a great organization. They're helping their people by giving them blankets, food and tarpaulins. It is my honor and pleasure to work with Tsiji. Despite all the planning ahead to ensure a peaceful aid distribution, several residents still broke through the gate. The uproar of the mob outside also concerned the volunteers. The peacekeepers have to be on their highest alert. Waiting in the queues, every face represents a hungry family, desperate for some warmth and love that Tsiji is ready to offer. The 11 members of Tsiji's 7th relief team to go to Haiti have reported to duty. Apart from keeping the current relief missions going, the volunteers have been assessing the situation in other disaster hit areas. Meanwhile, on February 24th, Sisi organized its second distribution of aid at the Croix de Mission Church. Starting work at 3 o'clock in the morning, volunteers found people already waiting in line to receive aid. Once more, the 82nd paratroopers of the United States Army kept the peace at the distribution site. Commander Ray Malave and other soldiers also helped hand out the supplies. The sun is shining cheerfully on another beautiful morning in Haiti. A line of people who have been queuing up since 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning snakes around the Croix de Mission Church. The small cards they are holding with the Jinxa aphorism written on them are aid relief coupons. Everyone waits patiently for the aid distribution to begin. With each bow a waterproof tarpaulin sheet and a warming blanket are handed over. Saying goodbye to these bodies of us makes us very happy. 
Although we bow at 90 degrees, it's a sign of respect to them. In the aftermath of the disaster, no matter how bad things get, you have to keep smiling. It suddenly started raining. These people had to take shelter in their dangerous homes. Families soaked to the skin were huddled together. It was terrible. Now when it rains like that, at least they'll have somewhere to take shelter that won't be so bad. So when I see their expressions, I feel very happy and satisfied. This is my first food distribution, and the, gracious, the Haitian people have been very gracious and very appreciative, and it's uh, just a very heartwarming. At this distribution at the Quad Mission Church, the U.S. 82nd paratroopers are here to keep order. Commander Ray Malave says the distribution is a new experience for him. The difference between this one and the ones that I've been before is, is the speed. In this one, you really took the time to, to do the program and, and really show the Haitian people that, that, you are, that they're special and that you, you're not here just to give out the, the HA um, goods, but to also make them feel special. It's, uh, it's, it's a special feeling. Um, having done this before, it humbles you. Okay, um, and it's not, not something that that you do every day. It's a sort of a, a special kind of feeling that you're serving other people. Mm. This was the first time I've seen it. I saw it on a video, so I thought it was very. You guys put a lot of thought into the distribution that you do, and you can. I think the audience picks up on that too. Just the, they really feel the compassion that you bring. After the distribution is over, the 32 U.S. troops go back to the Tsuji Relief Coordination Center, where volunteers have prepared gifts of red envelopes and instant rice for the soldiers. This organization is, uh, is the best, is actually more, uh, the most organized and uh, professional organization I've seen so far here in Haiti. Uh, I appreciate greatly what you guys are doing here. With Tsuji and the U.S. Army working together, the second aid distribution at Quad Mission is successfully completed. The third relief effort for another 2,000 households was to be held here on February 26th.